In this video, we will verify the accuracy of the load pin by going through a specific validation procedure. It assumes that the proper measuring head and matching slammer cable are installed. Make sure that you have the correct model of tension display panel to match the type of load pin that you'll be working with. First, make sure that the cable from the load cell on top of the test stand is connected to the top tension panel display. Then connect the other tension panel to the load pin being tested as shown in the video. Manually check the measuring head to verify that it's in good working order and to make sure that it's properly installed on the cable. The cable should have no tension and it should have some play as shown here. Both the load cell and the load pin need to be synchronized to zero in order to perform the validation. This is done by pressing up the enable button and while holding, pressing the zero button. Any increase in tension in the load cell should also be seen correspondingly in the load pin as they are now part of the same system. The load cell is periodically certified for accuracy so the load pin is being compared with this certified load cell during the validation. We recommend that you record the results of these tests including the asset number, the measuring head, and the test stand. To maintain traceability, the load cell is linked to the test stand through the measuring head and into the load pin. The limits of the test tensions depend on the measuring head and are listed on the tracking sheet. Measurements will be taken twice in the increment shown on the sheet. A third test will be performed at the end using only zero and then the maximum weight allowed by the machine. The test series is designed to measure both accuracy and repeatability. Begin to pump the hydraulic system handle. Pressurize the system and increase tension on the load cell, which is the top panel, to about 2,000 pounds. The readout on the panel connected to the load pin, which is the bottom panel, should increase at approximately the same rate. When the top panel reaches 2000, quickly note the reading on the lower panel and record both of these numbers on the sheet. Because of the gradual pressure bleed, the numbers will decrease slightly. Now repeat the same process for 4000 pounds and write down that number. In this example, the pressure number stopped at 4001 on the load cell and was allowed to bleed down to 4000. At that point, the corresponding load pin number was 4168. The number 4000 and 4168 are recorded. The readings are more accurate if you can avoid going over the target pressure number. Now repeat the same process for 6, 8, and 10,000 pounds. Looking at the recorded numbers in this example shows that the variance is quite consistent across the range and that the difference at the maximum pressure is 234 pounds at 10,000 or 2.3 percent. Next use the pressure release handle on the hydraulic system and allow the pressure to return to zero. Now reposition the pressure release handle and verify that the cable is slack. Pump up the system slightly to get the reading on the top panel to about zero. Zero out both panels as before and repeat the same multi-step tension testing procedure and record the readings. Do the same for the third cycle which tests only two points, zero and ten thousand. In this example the greatest variance was 234 which was a difference of 2.3 percent. The acceptable range is plus or minus 3 percent. Furthermore, with each round of tests, the variance between the load cell and the load pin decreased, meaning that the accuracy of the load pin increased with repeating tests. This would indicate that the load pin operates with acceptable variances and is working properly. If, when pressurizing the hydraulics, you significantly overshoot a tension mark, do not allow the meter to bleed down and use that reading. 
because of the lag in the hydraulic system, it will most likely give an incorrect reading. Rather, go below the tension mark and pressurize up to that mark again and then take that reading. A simple field verification technique. Pick up a tool string and note the weight prior to the job. When completed, and while still in the derrick, note the weight again. If the before and after weights are within 3% of each other, the load pin is acceptable. It is recommended that these tests be performed monthly to assure that you're getting accurate weld site readings.